Israel has always been God's people since the call of Abraham. This psalm is pretty pertinent to nowadays. Israel, Israel, listen. In Psalm 81, we read, Sing aloud to God our strength. Make a joyful shout to the God of Jacob. Raise a song and strike the timbrel, the pleasant harp with the lute. Blow the trumpet at the time of the new moon, at the full moon on our solemn feast day. For this is a statute for Israel, the law of God of Jacob. This he established in Joseph as a testimony, when he went throughout the land of Egypt. When I heard a language I did not understand. Now this is what God says. I removed his shoulder from the burden. His hands were freed from the baskets. You called in trouble, and I delivered you. I answered you in the secret place of thunder. I tested you with waters of Meribah. Hear, O my people, and I will admonish you. O Israel, if you will listen to me, there shall be no foreign god among you, nor shall you worship any foreign god. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people would not heed my voice, and Israel would have none of me. So I gave them over to their own stubborn heart, to walk in their own counsels. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. I would soon subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord would pretend submission to him, but their fate would endure forever. He would have fed them also with the finest of wheat, and with honey from the rock. I would have satisfied you. The Lord is saying that if you'll just come to him and accept that the Messiah, who was prophesied in testaments of old throughout the entire Bible, is the same Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who wants to save every person from their sin. For Romans 6.23 says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, his Son. And in John 3, 16, we read, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The three in one God sent the part of him that is the Son of God to be the Messiah for Israel and all mankind. He died on the cross and rose again. He is the man told about in Isaiah 53. He is the one prophesied of old. The prophets were told of this, and and Israel was expecting him, and no need to look any further. For he has already come, and he wants to save your soul. Who has believed our report? Isaiah 53 says. And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He came as a servant, you see. He didn't come as a king just yet, but he will soon. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him, stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living, for the transgressions of my people he was stricken, and they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul, and be satisfied. By his knowledge my righteous servant shall justify many." For he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. And if we just come to him, the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, 
and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And once you're born again into the family of God, he will never let you go. You can never escape his hand. For he loves you. And he has come for you.